Good morning, guys. We are going to be doing exponents today. Okay, and that's going to get us ready to do order of operations coming up uh, this week. Okay, so exponents today. If you remember exponents, uh, they're that little bitty number on the top right hand of a bigger number that we call the base. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to solve them and what it means. Okay, so we are on page number eight this lined up for you. There we go. We are on page eight. The topic is exponents. Okay. And first things first is always, what is an exponent? What's the definition? The definition of an exponent is actually the number of times the base number, the big number, is multiplied by itself. Okay, so it just tells us the it's we call it the power. Okay, it has the power to tell us how many times I'm going to be multiplying the base number. Okay, so the definition of exponent is going to be the number of times. the base number base number is multiplied by itself okay by itself so exponent the number of times the base number is multiplied by itself and I'll show you a quick example of this. So an example, uh, let's take four. And we say this, and we wanna know how to say this. The correct way of saying this is going to be four to the third power. So you don't say four to the little three. Uh, the best way of saying it is four to the third power. Okay, are four to the power of three, all right? Now, what does everything mean here? The big guy here, the four, is what we call our base. So that is my base number I'm talking about in the definition, okay? This is the number that's gonna be multiplied over and over again, okay? So the four is our base number. That little number on the top right corner that holds all the power is my exponent. Okay, he's the one that's gonna tell me you are multiplying that four by itself three times. So I should multiply four times four times four. I'm gonna have three fours, okay? So when I write this out correctly, this does not mean four times three. That's the biggest mistake we make in exponents when we get into order of operations and stuff. This does not mean four times three. This means I'm gonna multiply four three times by itself, okay? So this tells me Make sure you write down three fours. Okie dokie, you have the power, so I'm gonna write down three fours, and we are multiplying those three fours, just like that, okay? Now when you multiply, take your time multiplying, okay? Take the little time it takes. So you're gonna do four times four. What is four times four? 16. And then 16 times four is 64. And that is going to be your answer. Okay, so when you have this, make sure you write it out so you don't forget any numbers that you're multiplying and get it wrong. Okay, now I know some of you are probably using a calculator at home, but be fair warned, there are no calculators allowed for seventh grade level math. Okay, so when we come back together, there's no calculators. When you take the star, there are no calculators. Okay, so please make sure that you are at least doing the work without calculator. And then you can check your work with a calculator pretty, you know, um, that's fine with me. But try to get in the habit of not using the calculator at first and then checking with a calculator, okay? Because those will not be um, allowed. All right, some points to make here. There are some special exponents, some special things happen with certain exponents. I'm gonna go over those real quick, okay? Any base that doesn't have an exponent, so that's our regular numbers, you know, there's an invisible one there, okay? That's, there's really an invisible one, okay? We love the invisible numbers in math, right? So any base 
without an exponent has an invisible one. Okay, so any base without an exponent has an invisible one. Example of that. If I take the number eight, see how there's no exponent there? There really is an invisible one there now. Why do I need to know this right now? You're gonna need to know this for uh, later on in mathematics when we start actually multiplying and dividing exponents, okay? You have to know that if there is not one there, there really is an invisible one, okay? And that just really means the same thing. I'm gonna multiply eight by itself one time. So it's just gonna be a number eight. That's it, I'm just gonna have one eight there, okay? If I have um, 10, okay? There's nothing there, but there really is an invisible one. That's gonna help you on later on in the advanced math courses. So I just wanna make sure you have this in your notes, okay? That way you have them. You're not gonna see these. I'm not gonna have a question about this. Um, on a test, on the star test as well, okay? But I just wanna have have it for you. I do like to go a little bit above and a little bit beyond of what um, you should know, what you need to know, okay? I do go a little bit above that, all right? Um, the opposite of that, okay? If you have any base with a zero for an exponent, you're not gonna see that yet, but when you do, if you have any exponent with a zero, your, act, your answer is actually one. No matter what the base is, your answer is going to be one, okay? So let me write that down for you. Any base with an exponent of zero equals one. Any base with an exponent of zero equals one, okay? So some examples of that, if I give you six to the zero power, okay, that means I have zero, I have nothing. I'm multiplying six no times. So that's gonna give me an answer of one, okay? If I give you 20 to the power of zero, guess what that equals, read the rule, equals one. If I give you 1,256 to the zero power, that also equals one, you guessed it, equals one, okay? So anything that has a zero as an exponent is gonna give you one as an answer, no matter what the base is, okay? So again, that is above and beyond what we're supposed to know, but I like to give it to you anyway, okay? This also goes above and beyond, okay? Um, I've given you a number without an exponent. I've given you an exponent of zero. What if I give you an exponent of a negative? Hmm? Let me show you what happens there. Something really fun happens there. Do you remember the word reciprocal by any chance? If not, reciprocal is when you take the number, you see a fraction sometimes, and you kind of like flip it around, okay? Since we're dealing with whole numbers here, What's gonna happen is I'm gonna turn that whole number into a fraction. So we stick a one, okay? We're gonna stick a one above it, okay? So stick a one above it, and that's gonna be the reciprocal of what the number is, okay? So I'm gonna tell it, I'm gonna tell it to you again. Any base with a negative exponent, only the exponent, okay? If the base is negative, it's fine. It's the um, exponent, okay? So any base with a negative exponent. Negative exponent, okay? It turns into, turns into, it's positive reciprocal, okay? Any base with a negative exponent turns into its positive reciprocal. Now, those are a bunch of fancy words, right? So I'm gonna show you what that means. When I show you, you're gonna be like, that's it? That's what it does? Yes, that's all it does, okay? So let's get into our examples on this one. I'll do a couple with you as well, okay? So remember, the base, 
It could be positive, negative, doesn't matter. I'm looking for the exponent as to be a negative. So let's say I have three to the negative two power. Okay, the base is a negative. I don't care about the base. I'm looking at that negative exponent. That's when I'm gonna turn it into a positive reciprocal. So what does that mean? I'm going to change this, okay, into a fraction, which is three over one. And the reciprocal of three over one is one over three. Okay, then I'm going to take the exponent and change it. Since I flipped it, I'm going to go ahead and flip the sign as well. So I'm going to go from a negative 2 to a positive 2. Okay, so this is going to be 1 over 3 to the second power. So because of that negative again, I went ahead and changed the reciprocal of a, of a 3, which is going to be 1 over 3. And then I changed my negative 2 because I flipped it to a positive two, okay? And now we can solve it as if we were solving a regular exponent problem. The one's gonna stay there, and what does three to the second power mean you're doing? Multiplying three by itself two times, so three times three. And then when you multiply three times three, you get nine. So three to the negative second power is going to be 1 over 9. Okay? Be careful. I'm going to do another one of these with you, okay? To make sure you get it. So here's another example. Let's do 2 to the negative 3 power. Okay? I have a negative right here, which means it's going to turn into a fraction. And my exponent turns into a positive. Okay, that's the first thing you do when you see that negative exponent. Then you're going to go ahead and solve it. What does 2 to the third power mean you're doing? 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, this tells you write, three, write 2 three times. So 1, 2, 3. And now you multiply. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So to the negative third power is going to be one eighth. Okay. And again, this is above and beyond, so we're good. Okay, I just want to make sure you got that in your notes. Now, word form. Okay, there are some words that you need to know. Because I've been saying to the second power, to the third power. Okay, these two have special names. I can say to the second power, to the third power. But a better way of saying it, if I have any base, so this letter A represents any number. Any number you put there as a base. If you have a 2 as the exponent, you can say A to the second power. Perfectly fine. But you might see it on a test, any number squared. Okay? So this could mean 5 squared, 6 squared, 3 squared. Okay? So that's what that means, okay? Also, if you have an exponent of a three, those are the only two that have special names, okay? So instead of saying two to the third power, I could also say two cubed, okay? So when you see the word cubed, that means your exponent's gonna be the three. If you see the word squared, your exponent's gonna be a two. That's what those two words mean. And those are the only ones that have a special um, special name. Okay? Good? Good. Oh, I wish I were here so I can talk to y'all more. So we are talking to an empty class. All right, so let's do a couple of problems, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and try some out. So if I want us to solve 2 to the fourth power, how are we going to write those out? I'm going to write it 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 twos. Now is the hard part. This one's hard. Believe it or not, this is one of the most missed questions I've seen. Okay? We're going to multiply. 2 times 2 is 4. All right? Now I'm going to write it. I will write it down here for you. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 
So two to the fourth power is 16. Now, where do you think students mess up? They might go two, four, six, eight, and they'll put eight as their answer. So you gotta be very careful with that. This is one of the most missed questions. Can you guess one of the other most missed questions that um, I've seen on the star? It is that lovely three, okay? I've seen this so many times. When I give three squared out, guess what the number one wrong answer is? Six, good, they wanna say six. And I've seen them do this on their tests as well. They'll have it written and I'm like, write it out, see what it says, right? Because they always like to write it out. So they'll go, okay ma'am, it means three times three. And they'll still put six. I don't know why the threes give us some trouble. It gives me some trouble sometimes. I tend to do that sometimes when I'm multiplying fast. I'll do three, three times three and I'll put a six there. And my brain's like, why did you do that? I don't know, I just do it, okay? But three times three is actually nine. Okay, so it's actually nine. So three, to the sec three squared, okay, because I have this one, three squared means three times three. So I have two threes right here, okay? And then multiply correctly, <laughs> three times three, which is nine. Okay, good. Any questions there? Oh, I can't ask. If you have questions, go on to Google Meets, okay? Okay, so used to asking that. All right, we're gonna, there's the notes in complete. Okay, you need to see them. You need to pause and come back to it. It's up to you. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and do the try it out. Or you get to try it out on your own and then come back and see if you got it. So try it out. Okay, so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you four examples. I want you to solve. Okay, so I want you to solve three cubed, okay? Then I want you to solve four squared, and then let's do 164 to the zero power, and let's do six to the negative two power, okay? So press pause, and then come back and see if we got it right. All right, let's check it out. So three cubed means three times three times three. So if you did the multiplication correctly, three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27. So three cubed should have given you 27. Okay, so pat yourself on the back if you got that right. Good job. Four squared means four times four. And what is four times four? Should have got 16, not eight, 16. Okay. Let's see how many of I got this one right. 164 to the zero power. Remember anything to the zero power always equals one, just one, good. And the last one. 6 to the negative 2 power. As soon as you saw that negative, you should have gotten 1 over 6 squared to the second power, okay? Then you could have worked it out. 1 over 6 times 6, and 6 times 6 is 36. Okay, so double check on that. See how you did, okay? See where you went wrong. Maybe it was a multiplication error, okay? But I think that's all I have for you today. So go ahead and complete your assignment, all right? And that's all I have for you today. So um, if you have any questions, get onto Google Meets. If you don't, then go ahead and submit your assignments and you're good for the day, okay? All right, guys, you'll have a great day and hopefully I'll see y'all soon.